Hey everybody, my name is Gucci Gumish and I'm the research and policy project manager at Eurodis. So we are at Eurodis, uh, Rare Disease Europe, an umbrella organization uh, on all rare diseases across Europe and we represent 30 million people living with rare disease. So let me quickly share my screen for the presentation. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for this invitation. I'm really happy to speak at the European Sickle Cell Disease Summit and talk to you about recently published position paper with you today. So my talk is on the newborn screening position paper and also advocating for harmonizing approaches in the EU. To begin with, I want to talk about why newborn screening is important for us at Eurodis. Why do we advocate for this? So first of all, as you know, most of the screen diseases in the newborn screening panels are rare diseases. Sorry, there is something with the technical uh, the video there. Also, we advocate for reaching equal access and availability of the screening programs in every country in Europe. As you might know, right now, each country has a different approach to newborn screening. What does it mean? It means that they differ in many aspects, not only on the number of diseases that are being screened for, but also on when and how the test is performed, how the results are fed back to the patient, how the professionals are trained, what is the inclusion criteria of a disease, what is the process. So all these things are different in each member state. And the most important reason why we have newborn screening as a priority, I think our patient representative, Eduardo, states it way better. So he says that we don't want the newborns to have fewer chances of being diagnosed, depending on the country that they're born. This is why we set up your this newborn screening working group and we started taking action. So we set up this working group uh, back in 2019 to develop principles for harmonious adoption of newborn screening programs across the member states for improving up outcomes of for babies that are born with rare diseases. So it's a multi-stakeholder working group. The members are clinicians, academicians, uh, genetic counselors, policymakers, representatives from international or national federations with a focus on newborn screening, and of course, patient representatives. So we established this working group in the end of 2019, as I said, and we started by doing a mapping of newborn screening of member states, which led to discussions on challenges and the potential solutions. And then based on these discussions, we started developing our principles. So we drafted the document, we consulted different stakeholder groups for wider consultation. And in January, we published our position paper with 11 principles, and it also includes a call to action on how these principles should be implemented. So this is the position paper, and if you haven't read it, uh, you can find it on your this website. Now I will show you the principles. I won't go through each of them in detail, but I can say that they focus on all aspects of newborn screening. So the principles mention that newborn screening should be considered as a system, not only the test, but we have to think of all the components that surround the test. This includes the test, the sampling process, inclusion and or exclusion criteria for the conditions that are covered in the test, who should pay, take part in this decision making process, how this process should be organized. And also from the feedback that we got, one of the most important things that our patient representatives wanted to focus on was for newborn screening programs to screen for actionable diseases. Uh, treatable diseases. Actionable. So because there is no treatment for certain disease, it doesn't mean that there's nothing you can do about it. First of all, newborn screening saves the family from the diagnostic odyssey, which can be a very complicated journey that lasts for years, wondering what is wrong with your child. And if families know that their child has a certain disease, even if there's no treatment, they can plan better for their child's care and therapy, and then they can make informed decisions for future pregnancies, for example. And this is actually our first principle to include actionable diseases in the newborn screening programs. And also, if you look for a broader perspective, newborn screening or rare disease is a tool to support research. Having a pool of um, diagnosed individuals will also allow to conduct natural history studies, cohort studies to advance research, and then in the long run, discover treatments for the diseases that don't have a treatment yet. So in the position paper, we also discuss the importance of having a clearly defined process for deciding which conditions are covered by the newborn screening program that includes all stakeholders. 
We also talk about what kind of psychological, social, and economic support to be given to the newborn and to the family. We also highlight the importance of information, education, and European rights standards and data protection. And a couple of words on our call to action. So we know that newborn screening is under the mandate of national authorities, but we want European wide harmonized criteria, right? So what we did was we identified which decision making bodies to call to action. And this is basically a flow from the European level to the national level. So this is how it goes. In our position paper, we call on the steering group on health promotion and prevention at the SGPP to initiate the best practice collaboration with some member states and then um, to pilot newborn screening programs and based on these principles and to recommend them to the European Commission. And then the European Commission would select best practices for funding and scale them up and recommend them to the member states. And then the member states would consider uptake on national or regional level. And meanwhile, the European Parliament would support these initiatives that are aimed at harmonious newborn screening programs and also put pressure on the other European Union institutions. So um, also just to talk about our implementation plan. So now we're exploring all options on all three levels in terms of where an expert working group could be hosted, options that are being explored like DJ Sante or JRC. So we're also having some follow-up actions depending on the outcomes of these meetings. So now I wanna show you the feedback that we received for our publication. As I said, we published these principles in January, we presented them in our networks, different conferences. We also shared them on social media. And you see that we had a lot of reach, a lot of reaction. I mean, the numbers are important, but not only the number, I also want to show you the type of interactions. We have had a lot of messages, replies, comments, retweets, not only from patient organizations, but also patients themselves, doctors, policymakers, different stakeholder groups. And I think this highlights the need to move forward from the current situation of newborn screening. And you see the interaction we received was from different countries in many languages. So I just want to I just want you to take a moment to think about this because you see that there are positive reactions. There are reactions that show hope, appreciation, there are reactions that show frustration as well, and also reaction that shows collaboration and some solutions. So what I want to say is if you take a step back and look at the big picture here, you see the awareness that it creates. Creating this awareness is really important to get the support on the national level. So what we need you to uh, what we need from you is we invite you to help us spread the word. We invite you to translate these principles into your language and help us raise this awareness further. I also want to close with a couple of key messages, what we learned during this whole process. So what we learned was we would need a collective effort from all stakeholders in order to have harmonized newborn screening criteria that can be implemented in the member states. On the technology and ethical and economic aspects, we need to have a dialogue between parents and treatment developers, together with clinicians, with academic experts, to be able to correctly identify the needs. We also have uh, need some collaboration between patient groups and industry for complete and structured horizon scanning for timely decision making. And most importantly, the impact of early diagnosis can be life-changing for patients. And this is what we should focus on when we are advocating for newborn screening. So if you want to help us spread the word and if you want to translate and, um, into your language, the key principles, please get in touch with me or for any questions that you have, you have my email here. Um, and then help us raise this awareness. Thank you very much for listening.